Hi, this is Kay of CleverSomeday.com, and today I'm going to show you a cool new free website for converting photos into rough sketches you can draw with pens in your digital die cutting machine, like a Cricut or Silhouette. The site is called PlotterFun, and it's got a lot of interesting options, but today we are specifically going to look at the Line Draw section. When you open the link, you'll want to look below the Select Image button for the algorithm pull down and select Line Draw. I'm using Chrome browser here. PlotterFun did not work correctly on Safari for me, so if you have problems, you might want to try a different browser. The next thing to do is, on the Image tab, click Select Image. Browse to the photo you want to use, select it, and click Open. Alternately, you can use the Webcam tab to grab a quick selfie to experiment with. As with any kind of conversion, the better the original photo, the better your result will be. You are usually going to want to remove busy or dark backgrounds, but you can go ahead and try with the unedited photo first, so you can see where you might need to do some pre-editing of the photo next time around. Click the Use Image button, and Line Draw will render its version of your photo with its default settings. Getting good results will be a little easier if you understand what the settings do, so let's take a look at each one. Optimize Route at the bottom is going to make your Cricut or Silhouette draw the final design more efficiently, but until then it will slow us down, so we're going to uncheck it for now. The meat of this tool is in the Contours and Hatching sliders. Contours controls the outline strokes that go on the drawing to highlight edges and details. Hatching lines, in contrast, are the horizontal and diagonal lines strategically placed to portray light and dark in the image. The Contours and Hatching checkboxes let you toggle these attributes independently. I'm going to take advantage of that now to make it easier to show you how their sliders affect the result. With hatching switched off, we can see just the contours or detail lines. Low numbers give you more smaller, tighter details, and high numbers give you fewer, larger, more angular, and less exact details. Creating contour lines takes a lot of computing, so be aware that each iteration will take some time. I've sped this up quite a bit for demonstration purposes. Okay, so that's contour. Let's look at just the hatching by itself now. Low numbers for hatch scale put more of these shading lines closer together, whereas high numbers use fewer of these lines further apart. Hatching represents the bulk of the sketch in most cases, so you want the highest hatch scale that looks good to minimize drawing time and avoid oversaturating the paper. Now that I've shown you how contours and hatching work separately, I'm going to turn them both on again. Together they combine to give you the overall look of the sketch, but you may want to dial each in separately as I have done here, then fine tune with both on. There are also times when you want to use just one or the other in the final SVG. For instance, you may discover you like the hatching effect alone on a given image, or you may want the contours to overlay on a print with foil or something like that. The last slider is Noise Scale, which controls the fidelity of the resulting lines to the original image. Sliding it to the left makes it look more mechanical, whereas to the right makes it more organic, if you will. The default of one usually works well, so I would adjust this last, if at all. There's one more feature that isn't as obvious. You can zoom in by putting your cursor over the photo and then using your scroll wheel. Click and drag to pan the photo in the preview window. It's super handy to be able to crop your image on the fly to try out different crop and zoom configurations. Click the Use Image button to accept the changes and redraw. You may have noticed some size boxes near the top of the panel. When you first upload your photo, PlotterFun resizes it down to 800 pixels wide with height proportional per your original, or keeps the original dimensions if they were smaller. Type a new height in the box if you want to change the proportions. For instance, I can make the height 800 also to get a square canvas. Again, clicking the Use Image button for a new drawing. Know that this pixel size is for computational purposes only. PlotterFun's output, because it is vector, can be scaled to the size you need in your cutter software later. You can type in larger dimensions here in PlotterFun and get a more detailed sketch. 
but be aware that this will increase computing time and drawing time. And of course, there's a limit to how many lines can comfortably fit into a given size physical sketch. In practice, there will be many variables. The final result you get on paper will depend on the pen, the paper, and the cutter settings you select, as well as the size of your drawing. So the screen representation in PlotterFun isn't necessarily an accurate one. For instance, I have found the PlotterFun preview to be a little darker or denser than my typical finished drawings, but your results may differ. When you're happy with what you see on the screen, check the Optimize Route button, let it recompute one last time, and click Download SVG. PlotterFun will send the SVG to your Downloads folder, assuming that's your default destination for downloaded files. There are a few things you need to know about these SVGs depending on whether you will be using them in Silhouette Studio or Cricut Design Space. First for the Cricut Design Space users. The line draw SVGs tend to be too complex for Design Space and can have stray lines if imported directly. For this reason, and to reduce the time it will take to draw, it's best to take the SVG into Inkscape and use the Simplify command under the Path menu on them. In the status bar you will see the number of nodes drop dramatically hopefully with little change to the image. You can also use Break Apart under the Path menu to remove or adjust lines in Inkscape. And you can even draw in additional lines with the Pen tool if you like. But if you do any of that, be sure to select everything and choose Combine also in the Path menu when you are done. Use the Save As command to save the edited version under a new name so as not to overwrite the original. If you are not an Inkscape user, I also had success using an online SVG optimizer called SVGOMG with its default settings to simplify the raw line draw output to make it more design space friendly. If you're a Silhouette Studio user, you'll need the Designer Edition or above to load SVGs, of course. However, Basic Edition users should be able to convert them to DXF online. Whether you import the SVG or DXF, you'll want to use Silhouette Studio's Simplify command on them. It's found on the Quick Action toolbar when the Point Editing Tool button is selected, or on the Point Editing panel. If you want to remove or adjust any lines, release Compound Path first. If you'd like to add any lines, the Curve tool works nicely for this. Select all and make Compound Path when you're finished. In most cases, the sketches are fine with just simplification, but I did want to show you that if you're handy with the drawing tools in Inkscape or Silhouette Studio, there are touch-up options. With simplification and any other adjustments done, your line draw element is ready to incorporate into your Cricut or Silhouette project, be it a sketch for framing, the front of a greeting card, or a t-shirt using infusible ink or other sublimation markers, to name just a few ideas. I hope you've enjoyed learning about this new tool and how to use it with your Cricut or Silhouette. Please see this video's description for the link to PlotterFun and any other sites I've mentioned, plus related resources such as other photo-to-sketch conversion techniques. As always, I'd appreciate a like, follow, subscribe, or comment here or on my Clever Someday blog. Thanks so much for watching.